What do you do when you have a teacher who's killing kids' drive to learn? You have to have a voice in this. There are too many kids who are not getting the education they deserve. How do you suggest that we change? The most important policy that we can have is to ensure that we have accountability. Please give a warm chat of your welcome to Michelle Reed. Thank you very much. It is a, an absolute pleasure for me to be here today. A lot of what I'm going to be talking about today, which was my experience uh, being the chancellor of the school district in Washington, D.C. for three and a half years, we had an achievement gap between where our white kids were performing and where our black kids were performing of 70 percentage points. That's 7 zero, 70 percentage point achievement gap. But when I took over the Washington, D.C. public school system, 8% of the 8th graders in the city were operating on grade level in mathematics. 8%. Which means that 92% of our kids did not have the skills and knowledge necessary to be productive members of society. We were still essentially allowing the color of a child's skin and the zip code that they lived in to dictate their educational attainment levels and therefore their life chances and their life outcomes. That is the most un-American thing I can imagine. It is the biggest social injustice imaginable. And we have to do something to change it today. I think the stakes are incredibly high on multiple levels. Um, you know, on a very nuts and bolts level, if you look at our economy right now and our position in the global marketplace, it is not going to get better until we can fix the public education system. I believe very, very strongly that public education is supposed to be the great equalizer in our country. It's supposed to be the thing that ensures that it doesn't matter if you're black or white, rich or poor. We have a public school system so that every single child can have an equal shot in life. That is not the reality that we have. It wasn't the reality for children in Washington, D.C. And I guarantee you, it is not the reality for children in Chattanooga. I think Chattanooga need, needs to take a hard look. People want you to be quiet sometimes when you say things like that, but she's saying it, and we're in Chattanooga, and it needs to be said. I think it has to be a community effort, like she was saying, and we have to all get together and say, it is not good enough, and now we have to do something about it. The thought in my mind is not, is it possible to do this? It is absolutely possible. We can make this happen. The question, the more relevant question is, do we as the adults in this society have the wherewithal that it would take to make the incredibly difficult decisions necessary to make that a reality? And the quick answer to that question has been no. In this country, over the next 20 years, we will have about 123 million high-skill, high-paid jobs available. But at the rate we're going right now, American kids will only be able to fill 50 million of those jobs, which means about 75 million of them will be, have to be outsourced to kids in India and China and, and, and Korea, um, where the kids are gaining the skills that they need. I think for most American families, knowing that is terrifying. People, you can say whatever you want, but the real work happens in the classroom. And nothing will change until we ensure that we are supporting our teachers to do the incredibly hard work every day. You cannot underestimate the power of the teacher. You know, you asked what works. I mean, it is the number one in school factor that determines whether or not kids are learning is teacher quality. There's only one, you got it, good job. There's if you look at the data, uh, there's very compelling research that shows that if poor and minority kids have three highly effective teachers in a row versus three ineffective teachers in a row, it can literally change their life trajectory. I got into education because I do believe it's the great equalizer, and I think we have lost track of that somewhere along the way. Definitely, I think children come first, and that's what Michelle Rhee is all about. Teachers do play such a critical role. We're in there every day with them, and we see what needs to happen to have that learning continue. There have been a lot of good conversations that have been going on in the city around how to evaluate teachers in a fair and transparent way but also to tie that evaluation to student growth and performance. That's incredibly important. We have to shift the decision making and begin to develop policies that put children first. Because when you do that, 
it actually makes you see things in a wildly different light. You have to have a system of accountability, and we have to stop spending money on things that don't produce any outcomes for kids, and instead reprioritize that money and repurpose that money towards the things that we know are really going to have an impact in the classroom. This is a national problem. The only way that we're going to fix things in this country is to do right by our children, first and foremost, and make sure, and, and everybody in this room plays a role in this, it is your responsibility as citizens of this city to ensure that you fix the public schools and you give every single child in this city, regardless of where they live and who their parents are, the opportunity to live the American dream by getting an excellent education. Thank you.